Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, just to make sure I'm audible, can you please confirm in the chat that I'm uh, clear, that my audio is clear? OK, thank you. So yeah, thank you for joining us for the webinar on shared mobility and the need of an open ecosystem with our speaker, Sujit Nair, co-founder and CEO of Beckin. Uh, before we start, a quick introduction of myself and the details of the challenge that these webinars are a part of. I'm from the NASCOM Industry Partnership Program, or NIPP for short, which is an initiative under the 10,000 Startups Program. So every year, NIPP picks a trending theme or a technology that's of interest to the industry and our partners, and we sort of run a nationwide idea challenge. Uh, the challenge is open to startups all across the country, and this year we are hosting the second edition of the NIPP Mobility Challenge based on the immense response that we received from the previous year. We are running the 2020 edition from March to June, uh, and we are currently in the phase of taking in applications for startups across uh, 28 use cases and 8 themes. So we can broadly classify these uh, themes in, under people flow, flow of goods, and smart vehicles. And we plan to make this year's edition bigger and better by collaborating with other initiatives of NASCOM, such as the Center of Excellence for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. And also happy to say that we've received support from the government of Karnataka under their urban development plan in which uh, mobility is a huge focus at the moment. So you'll find all the details of the challenge on our microsite, Mobility Challenge nipp.tech. Uh, please do have a look and participate and show your support. If you have any queries, you can get in touch with me on inchara at nascom.in. Uh, that's I-N-C-H-A-R-A at nascom.in. I'll leave details of both the microsite link and my email address in the chat section uh, so you can refer to it and you have it handy in case you have any queries. Now to introduce our speaker for the day, we have Sujit Nair, co-founder and CEO of Beckin who will be giving us his insights into shared mobility and the need of an open ecosystem. Sujit Nair is the CEO and founder at Beckin since Jan 2019. And prior to this, he has contributed in many capacities, uh, such as the chief business officer for MobiK India. He has been a member of the board of directors for Paycraft Solutions and has also played a key role uh, as a director at EY. So Sujit has designed and deployed a deep duplication as a service model for Aadhaar biometric identification, which as we all know is the world's largest system of its kind. And uh, he also designed and deployed the industry first business model in transit ticketing for mass transit authorities in India. So Sujit, thank you for joining us today and over to you. Right. So let me quickly share the. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sujit here. Uh, just a quick check. Can somebody ping me on my chat window to say if you can hear me well or not? Great. Thank you. Right. So uh, thank you, NASCOM, for having me here. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for logging in and for the patience. Sorry about that little technical glitch uh, with my audio. Uh, so, so let me get started anyway. So when NASCOM uh, team reached out to me to speak on this topic uh, a few weeks ago, I couldn't have imagined how the world would have changed ever since. Um, I think it's in time of crisis like this as entrepreneurs, especially uh, entrepreneurs in mobility business, I think they would have many questions for the future. 
um, some of the questions that I've heard personally is that do we really downsize our business uh, in the in view of the unprecedented evening event happening around us, or instead should we look at ways to optimize our resource and cost while trying to you know continuing to expand our business? I think it's as difficult times uh, that allow us to think about new alternatives. Uh, so let me also factor this new context, the rapidly developing context, into my talk today, uh, which I'm going to have over hopefully the next 20, 25 minutes, and then also take in your questions. All right. Uh, but before I proceed, uh, a quick introduction about you know who we are and what we do. Uh, Open Shared Mobility Foundation is a philanthropic, uh, mission-oriented organization, not for profit. Uh, and our aim is to, one of our aims is to accelerate the adoption of integrated mobility uh, among the masses. And, uh, and, our, and the way we want to, way we are approaching that is to help design a very simple, open, lightweight protocol uh, that, that can bring uh, mobility services of any service provider uh, or of any form, be it the mass transit uh, transport provider, or the ride hailing companies, or the micro mobility. Uh, providers like the bike sharing, the, the, the bicycle sharing, et cetera, uh, to bring them together to offer a more consumer-centric, single multi-mode door-to-door journey. And uh, this is what we're looking at uh, uh, at creating as a protocol. We're calling it the backend protocol. And uh, we, I'll talk about backend uh, protocol in specific in, in a bit. But, uh, but essentially, backend is an open specification story. Uh, and as a foundation, we intend to engage with cities service providers to volunteer and adopt this protocol to create what we call as an open connected ecosystem in the city. Um, and why do we think this is important? Uh, let me uh, you know, answer that by taking a step back and looking at mobility itself, urban mobility in specific. Now, it's indeed a large complex problem that is rapidly evolving in scale and form. Uh, with over a third of world's population in the next few decades expected to be living in cities, it is, if not already, putting a lot of stress on the infrastructure and transport is no exception. Yeah, so when we, when we as mobility business are thinking about being a solution to that problem, or at least a part of that solution, uh, we need to think of ways to solve for scale, speed, and sustainability. And that is where it is key, extremely important to understand that no one agency can solve this complex problem by themselves alone. It would require everyone in the ecosystem to collectively solve for it. So that, which means that while we are thinking as a single agency thinking like scale whatever works, we should also start thinking about what, what works at scale, which requires an ecosystem collective thinking. Just to repeat, we have to not just focus on scaling what works, but also focus on what works at scale and shifting from that one agency, one solution approach to a, a multi-agency ecosystem approach to solving. Yeah, and and while we're doing this, we have to recognize the underlying shifts that are happening in the mobility space itself. You know, today the mobility as a service is is is, is has become digital in its nature, accessible at the click of a button. You know, with the ubiquity of smartphones, GPS, maps, etc., it has helped transform the perception of mobility in the eyes of the customer from being this physical form of transport to a more consumer-centric, on-demand you know, mobility. I think that shift is very important, and I think there's an opportunity there with that kind of a shift in perception. How do we kind of bring the ecosystem together and solve the larger problem of urban mobility? Um, so, and, and thanks to this technology adoption, we are looking at diverse new forms of mobility choices being made available to the customer. Today, I mean, the last decade, we have seen the surge of ride hailing, then we have seen carpooling happening, you know, bike sharing, car sharing, uh, bike taxis all coming into picture, right? Uh, but the question that remains is there's all this diversity. Is it really solving the problem or is it in a way contributing to the problem? Yeah. If you look at how all, you know, mobility businesses operate, um, you know, they're today at some extent they're acting in silos. You know, every business, every mobility business is kind of building their own app their own platform stack and approaching customers independently. Yeah. Uh, and while they're being consumer centric within the confines of their business, the question is, are we being consumer centric at a population scale? Yeah. So what we have today because of this multiple choices are, you know, multiple isolated computing networks, making 
it more fragmented in the eyes of the customer and and the cognitive load on the customer to pick and choose from has increased you know today he sees his basic purpose of mobility which is to go from point a to point b whether it's for work or for recreation or for weekend shopping he sees that as many journeys in a journey yeah with each of them having the separate means of access booking and payment so much are the complexity of choices with no single form of a journey being available through these choices um, chances are that these customers fall back on their most compelling alternative which is to take the personal vehicle be it a car or a two wheeler out and and fulfill that journey so so this is actually so what we are seeing essentially is that this mobility networks okay while they have increased in choices they actually creating a very divergent mobility ecosystem not convergent and not actually solving the problem of 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 making the consumer move away from their personal mobility choices to a more efficient sustainable choices of shared mobility and public transport yeah uh, and, and i think the challenge it, it, and, and it's there in numbers to see today if you look at the whole market share the model share of mobility signi significant in fact in some cities more than 50% people rely on personal vehicles uh, more than any any of the public transport or shared mobility okay so so this is so while there are many mobility shared mobility entrepreneurs and public transport options available in big cities in india uh the, this whole self competing attitude is kind of eating, it's more about cre creating an approach of a zero sum game or a winner take all uh, rather than collectively expanding the pie especially when there's so much of headroom and and uh, opportunity to expand that pie and and make uh, make compelling alternatives to uh, uh, the choice of resorting to a personal vehicle in the eyes of the customer so that's where i think even this diversity is not actually helping solve the problem so now the question that therefore uh, that is in front of us is to you know see how do we move from this winner take all zero sim zero sum game approach to uh, something which is more like a win win how do we think win win yeah uh, this is where we think that you know integrated mobility can really help solve this problem uh, just by looking at sheer numbers today if you look at mass transit operators in cities like you know delhi bangalore they hold significant volumes of rides but you also see the shared mobility operators as a constant threat yeah uh, if you look at delhi metro for example they do close to about 5 million rides a day uh, bmtc which runs the bangalore city bus services they do about 4 million uh, you know they have 4 million plus ridership a day but they are fixed corridor or route specific mobility services are not on demand like some of the new forms of mobility are but they do have the challenge of first mile last mile okay so imagine if all of these 5 million or 4 million rides have a first mile last mile opportunity and if some of the early mobility startups were to tap into that demand of first mile last mile that itself creates a huge opportunity for the new mobility businesses and it helps even uh, mass transit expand their ridership base and collectively we are actually increasing the ridership and offering a more convenient door to door option okay for example uh, metro can help you get to a place faster you don't have to worry about getting stuck in traffic a bus on a priority lane can probably go faster than uh, than your personal car stuck in traffic or and then struggling to find a parking lot for your personal car so these are some of the th alternatives that you can get away with if you can make first mile last mile connectivity more seamless yeah so but the question is then you know how do we make this integration happen how do we offer the choice to the customer which is as compelling as the, the choice of taking a personal car yeah and 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 this is where i think that the very the conventional thought uh, seems to be that does this so why don't we build another platform on top of all these mobility platforms and start integrating them okay so does the solution always mean that you build another platform to integrate all the mobility platforms is that the approach so then the question comes who owns it how do we trust that platform with our data you know does it would it eventually become a very controlling uh, a, a player who kind of stifles or curtails my competitiveness okay so these are some of the you know pertinent questions that exist especially in a very platform mature economy uh, like the time we are living in so is building another platform on top of this to just to make the integration happen the right way to think about it so that's when we thought about doing something different and i think the answer is in the, the story behind these big platforms themselves you know just stop ourselves and ask this question that 
have these platforms come up on their own have they been have they been built completely from scratch yeah does it is, is, are they like the platforms which just independently grew the, grew to such such big huge you know uh, business enterprises now if you look at it closely you'll realize that some of these platforms actually relied on some of these more open freely accessible shared infrastructure right imagine having a whatsapp uber or airbnb without internet which is built on http protocol or for that matter the open access to gps or cloud infrastructure or maps for that matter so i think some of these platforms were built on what is called as a shared digital infrastructure in the first place to enable those kind of services uh, that they are known for and and the and internet gps are these non exclusive non rivalrous infrastructure accessible by all we trust them by the nature of their very design yeah imagine for a moment if they were not existing in the first place imagine an internet without http how would it look like yeah how would how would the economy on 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 such a on on such an uh, infrastructure like internet happen if there was no http i think these make us ponder that you know sometimes shared digital open infrastructure does enable a lot of problem solving and the closest example in the recent times is is upi itself india has a remarkable payment digital infrastructure in the form of upi and if you look if you look at upi upi is actually an open specification it's just a specification on which the whole new payment ecosystem grew up within its very inceptions in the last 3 years today we are talking about doing 1.3 billion transactions per month on 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 upi specs so i think that clearly shows that open specifications can supercharge innovation in ecosystems as and solve complex problems like urban mobility and allow businesses big or small to actually expand the market and add layers of innovation on top of their existing offerings and make it you know penetrate faster into the into the ecosystem Yeah. so this is the kind of the the train of thought we had when we were thinking about backend yeah so backend essentially is a very simple lightweight open protocol it's not an app it's not a platform it is a very simple lightweight open api which when everybody in the ecosystem like in a city where all mobile mobility service providers can enable and implement this api you are automatically creating an open network okay uh, which enables you to make your services accessible to a much wider uh, ecosystem uh backend protocol therefore is is for mobility is is pretty much like what http is for internet and what upi is for payments yeah um it opens up multiple things and let's look at some of them and let's imagine you know backend from you know your own perspective if you are a mobility startup okay um now today if i am a mobility startup you would think that okay if i have a mobility service let's say if i have a fleet whether it's a fleet of cycles a fleet of bike taxis or cars uh, you're thinking of you know building your own or own app for your, for the platform to make your services discoverable and then we market and pray for people to download your app to find your services now instead what if your services were automatically discoverable on any mainstream app which already resides in the in the, in the devices in the in the customers hands you know so for example what if your services were accessible say through a whatsapp or a google map or a paytm or a phone pay which is kind of mainstream and people are actually using those services day in and day out so instead of making your customers come to you online why don't we take your services to the places where customers are already spending time online this so what essentially i'm saying is that today there is a possibility of unbundling a mobility service from the confines of the the app and making it distributed make it making the dis distribution so big so rich that it can be made available on any of the mainstream apps and therefore making it more accessible imagine and and making it naturally you know discoverable and accessible imagine the kind of cost savings you would have in terms of reducing the marketing dollars on the spends to promote your app and and making uh, services naturally discoverable on in, any of these popular third party platforms so that's one way to look at it uh, another use case uh, where a protocol can help is let's say that uh, you are a mobility business and and you want to get get quickly acquire more rights instantly uh, without you know spending these marketing dollars and one of the one of the angles you are looking at expanding your businesses to kind of look at first mile last mile connectivity which i spoke about 
a few minutes ago uh, to look at first mile, last mile connectivity with any of the mass transit system, you know, whether it's a metro or a bus in a city. Now, the typical approach would be you as a business would have to go engage with each of these mass transit operator, you know, sign partnerships or contracts to say that, you know, please allow me to offer my services at the premises of your service terminals or integrate my platform with yours. And, you know, each of that is a one to one agency conversations with every city, every operator that you want to engage with. But instead, if everybody is talking about is using the same protocol, using the same language as backend, then the, by the act of enabling your services on backend, it is automatically available for integration with every multi, every mass transit journey that is happening without without the businesses having to reach out to these organizations and having one to one agency. Even in the previous case, when I was talking about, you know, your services being available naturally on let's say a WhatsApp or a Google map and all, you don't have to actually reach out to them and do one-to-one -one discussions. The fact that your services are automatically enabled on backend, they become naturally discoverable, not just for accessible as a standalone service, but also as part of a multimodal journey with single mile, uh, last mile connectivity uh, of a mass transit. So these are just some of the use cases in which an open specification and open protocol like backend helps create a greater participation um, and innovation in the space. So what we this is what we call as creating an open marketplace, in fact, an open playground on which everybody, whether they're big or small player, has, has fair and transparent tools of engagement, come in, participate, and expand the business while optimizing you know, the, the cost of doing business. So this is one of the things that uh, we are looking at enabling using a, a simple open protocol like Beckon. Uh, Beckon itself as a protocol is, is, is a very lightweight, um, completely technology and form agnostic uh, specs. Uh, it doesn't need any central platform to get energized. It's completely distributed just like HTTP uh, and it allows multiple service providers to come together and offer a more consumer centric uh, service and, and come together in a way of collaboration while being competitive. Uh, a mass transit uh, operator would know what its limitations are. It can never be an on demand but it knows that it can probably work along with some of the on-demand mobility operators and expand their own business as well as helping those business also expand this. So this collaboration while being competitive is, is a unique proposition that an open spec like Beckend can offer as it did with uh, internet in case of HTTP or with UPI. So this was essentially uh, what I wanted to talk about as a quick illustration and this is my last slide. As a quick illustration, what you're seeing here is that once a city and all the operators in that city, whether it's a metro or a bus or a private bus operator or auto rickshaws, I'm just taking Kochi as an example here. You know, if in each of them can get connected to backend, you're essentially creating what is called as a backend digital rail, where everybody can make their services available on this digital rail to be accessed by any consumer interface, whether it's your own app or any other third party app or even an IVRS call or even a Kirana shop wanting to offer mobility service as a ticket or an Alexa kind of a, a voice assistant, any of them can pull your services and make it that much more easily available for the end consumer. Yeah. So this is the idea behind why I think uh, all the op operators should come together and expand the pie and look at creating such open ecosystems for their own benefit. That's my talk. Thank you. And I'm open to questions. Thanks, Ujit. Uh, right, so we'll be taking questions from the audience right now. So please put in your questions in the questions. So I see some people are sending them in. Uh, the first one, Sujit, we have a question from Kunal. Uh, more to do with your company. He's curious why you went with the model of making a farm. I think I'm still audible, but I have a challenge in terms of me receiving your audio outputs, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not able to hear you from the other end. Uh, may I request you to post your questions in the questions box on the interface so that I can take a look at them and, uh, and answer them um, as much as possible. So did I able to oh, hear? I already see a question here from uh, Kunal. Um, and the question is, why did you go with the model of making a foundation than a private domain company.
Uh, just to quickly answer this question, uh, Kunal, I think uh, uh, ours is a philanthropic initiative. Uh, it's a foundation co-founded by um, Nandan Nilakeni, the Pramod Verma, and myself. Uh, our idea is to is to make sure that the specifications are as open and independent as possible. And our vision is that over a period of time, this protocol becomes kind of a standard by itself, and everybody contributes to it. In, an, in a very open source approach. So this, so if you look at our website, uh, and I, I would request everybody to please visit our website, backend.org, you see that our specification, beta specification is already available there, and it's covered under Creative Commons, yeah, as an open you know, license to access the specs. And we, we, we are just putting it out there as the initial authors of the specification, and hoping that there will be a larger community which will adopt it and, and, and help us in continuously evolving the specification and making it a kind of a necessary useful standard for everybody to use so this is the reason we wanted to keep it a not-for-profit in fact we are a zero revenue zero profit company and we wanted to just uh, help promote this mo movement among um, among the larger community okay so i'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the next question here uh, Jajiti uh, from Clever Mind. Uh, the question is that let's say I need the Delhi Metro transit time for last mile connectivity or airplane travel arrival. How will backend help us? Great. Um, so good question, uh, Jajit. So I think uh, just let's take the scenario and let's say that you know, uh, uh, let's say that we have the Delhi Metro line, um, the airport, the flight arrival, uh, Delhi flight arrival departure information available. You know, unpublished on using this backend protocol. Okay, and let's look at any consumer app. Let's say that your favorite app, uh, for the sake of this discussion, is say, you know, uh, WhatsApp. Okay, and and uh, with and if, if WhatsApp is on backend protocol, I hope it someday it will be. Uh, we you can ask WhatsApp saying that you know uh, if if I'm let's say that you are at Connaught Place and you want to catch the Delhi Metro line, uh, and and reach the airport based on the arrival. So so let's say that as and when you book your travel ticket and. Uh, uh, as in when you book a travel ticket or as in when you arrive at the Delhi airport, you can search for from and to location on WhatsApp and WhatsApp will take this request and broadcast it to all the mobility service providers, including airport, airport line, metro operator, which is the MRC itself, uh, it broadcasts it to all of them to make them uh, respond to this query, seeing this and if there's any service, service available for this particular customer and what are the kind of timing, schedules, price, uh, what are the charges. And, and backend being a transaction protocol, you can not just look at those services, schedules, and arrival times. You can also potentially pay for it uh, if the operator is is, is 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 okay receiving the payment online. You can even pay for it and buy a ticket. Uh, let's say that in Delhi Airport Metro already has a QR ticketing, so you can actually get a QR code ticket for your journey avail uh, through WhatsApp and 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 you know then initiate your journey on the Delhi Metro Airport line. I think this is that's one of the use cases that I can think about. I hope that answers your question, Jajit. Uh, and moving on to the next question from Himanshu. Uh, the question is, how can one go for backend platform to integrate into business model? Um, so I think first thing, uh, with Himanshu, I think backend is just an open spec like HTTP. HTTP is not a platform, right? Similarly, backend is an open spec, and there are a bunch of APIs uh, that are spec'd out. Okay, so uh, if you're a mobility service company, you need to look at those specifications available on our website. Uh, see if you can build your APIs on it. And using the APIs, you're just broadcasting your services, saying that you have a fleet available, there's a service available. Anybody on the other end, uh, any consumer app on the other end, also does the same as a backend app, consumer app, also integrates this API and is, is, is kind of broadcasting search requests. And, and the fact that it's kind of routed through a similar HTTP-like internet, just like how you have DNS for routing, from the source to the uh, destination in case of an internet, we also have a, a distributed set of nodes as part of the backend protocol architecture, which kind of takes this request from some of these apps and routes it to your platform, which is already listening on backend to take your response and forward it. Yeah, so that's how this mechanism works. So, so there is no platform plane in it, but it's almost like a grid that gets created when everybody is, is on backend API. I hope that answers your question. Uh, I hope that also answers the question from Sheshadri saying, is especially a software? It is not, it's a specification, but as a business, if you, you have to implement a software API, 
which is compliant to this uh, specifications and if everybody is compliant to the same specification then 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 your platform and those platform can start talking to each other in a very vendor agnostic partner agnostic way so it's basically a common way kind of a common specification that kind of creates a common machine language for everybody to understand mobility services and therefore do transactions uh there's a question from sarav uh, uh the question is its protocol signed off by government good question uh, so like i said we are a not for profit uh, organization we are independent of any organization or any government in india or outside it's a it's a, it's a global organization uh, um so governments are actively talking to us both in india and outside they want to look at uh, the fact that it's open interoperable and some uh, unfortunately there is no other similar such protocol design have available elsewhere uh, which is not just a data specification but also a transaction protocol some of the some of the some of the city state central governments both in india and outside are kind of interested and are talking to us for pilots and we are also looking at implementing pilots in some of the cities and uh, and yeah and we are working closely with government to make these pro pro protocol something which is acceptable to a city and make them use it okay like i said we are just the initial authors and advocates of this protocol but the real implementation has to be done uh, by the ecosystem of providers which is essentially enabling apis and making them talk to each other but we are looking at uh, working with governments on some of these pilots uh, the next question was from tejaswini uh, from one money uh, the question is how secure is the data that shared across the platform good question again thanks tejaswini that you good that you asked so the protocol if you look at the specifications and uh, some of the specifications that we will be releasing in future uh, they are designed for privacy and confidentiality they are designed by default we are looking at you know using uh, sign, uh, digital signatures and digital encryptions and all kinds of you know popular technologies that will be enabled on top of uh, this protocol to enable the security so uh, just to, just to you know elaborate on this whole security from a privacy and confidentiality perspective you know from a privacy perspective as an end customer as a rider okay does it mean that my data is accessible for anybody who is connecting to this protocol the answer is no okay uh, it it will be only seen by those people who are necessarily fulfilling my request or fulfilling a journey and to the extent that i give consent to okay uh, so that is something that uh, that the protocol by design takes care of the confidentiality more from the the, the service provider's perspective for example if you are receiving a lot of you know rides and therefore enhancing your business does it mean that others can see how many rides you are getting and at what time and what level the answer is no the confidentiality of the business provider is also kind of you know uh, maintained and uh, but by the same time uh, we are also looking at this infrastructure generating a lot of open data but open data doesn't mean that every bit of transaction data is made available but it's aggregated anonymized at a level where it doesn't tell you who is doing what business but generally tells you as to what form of mobility at uh, during the day how, what how many rides could they get in a particular region or not particular at a particular location and those kind of anonymization and aggregations are possible to help the uh, cities uh, generate open data for better urban planning so i hope uh, that gives you some comfort on the security aspect uh, tejaswini uh, moving on to the other question this is from kushara kushagra agrawal of ks business consulting um the question is do you plan to bring fast tag qr code on board of logistics mobility okay so this protocol uh, as i said uh, kushagra this is a completely a form agnostic protocol so, and we are looking at mobility and all the allied sectors of mobility be it parking city toll intercity tolls uh, like fast tag technically we are form agnostic so this protocol can enable uh, the likes of fast tag okay and those are the specifics will be dealt with when we when we engage in the in the pilots around it but as a protocol if you look at it it does not recognize and therefore factor that deep into the design it it kind of keeps it open for any service provider of any service whether it's a tolling service or a mobility service or a parking service to be included uh, to be covered as part of this protocol and that's our endeavor too we want to keep it as form agnostic so tomorrow if it means i mean i mean just keeping the imagination high if there is drone aviation urban aviation takes off then technically this protocol is equipped to handle even those emerging new forms of uh, uh, mobility uh, solutions as well and uh, and by that by that same token uh, even uh, tolling and parking are also getting covered yeah i hope i have looked at all the questions that are already posted here if there are any more questions i'm happy to answer them
um otherwise yes. nascom team i'm so sorry it's just just one way traffic from my side i just cannot hear anything from your end um uh, happy to take a call from the nascom team to see uh, you know while keeping myself on mute to see if you have to continue here or take questions offline hello yeah yeah i hope i was audible yeah all right great thank you so much certainly yeah thanks thank you um, so i think uh, that's it from my side uh, guys and thank you so much for for listening to me patiently i know there was a bit of a technical glitch and i had to you know kind of rush through some of my points but i hope uh, uh, the very essential idea of backend and open ecosystem idea is something that is ringing well with you guys and uh, makes you reflect on 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 looking at uh, how to do mobility differently uh, from an open system uh, open ecosystem perspective um, uh, look forward to you know uh, staying connected with you guys through nascom or otherwise and happy to answer your questions uh, even later but thank you so much for your time have a nice day and stay safe thank you